Hello everyone, my name is Pixelris and welcome back to the Minecraft Survival Guide. I hope you're all having a good day. In today's episode, we're going to embark on a pretty massive project and it's going to require me to go and find <laughs> what I think I've left over in this chest over here at the house. We need to find the Ocean Explorer map that we used to locate the first ocean monument that we raided in this world. Because to be honest, I've forgotten whether I even made a nether portal over there and I can't remember where it is. <laughs> so we've got this Ocean Explorer map here. That looks like we are are headed to the southwest and I've got a bunch of potions ready to go for today's episode. We're probably also going to take a conduit over there so we can have water breathing more permanently, which is why I've got the potion of water breathing and potion of night vision, but I've only got one of those each so that we can initially set a few things up. And then from there, I've got a bunch of potions of invisibility because that should keep us safe from getting detected by any of the guardians over there while we do what we need to do. Because this is going to be the beginning of a guardian farm. And the reason I started this episode off in my storage system is that my storage system is lacking in a certain group of blocks, and that is the prismarine blocks. We don't have any of those stored in here because I don't really have a large quantity of them. There's a few still stored in the basement. I used up most of the dark prismarine with the piping that was bringing the lava buckets down to my copper aging facility in the dripstone cave. I kind of want to have a reasonable supply of prismarine in this world. It's also kind of nice to have sea lanterns and other lighting options, so we should be able to get hold of a bunch of prismarine if we convert an ocean monument into a farm for guardians who will drop prismarine shards and prismarine crystals, especially once we start killing them in larger quantities, we'll have more than enough for what we need to do. Now there are a bunch of different approaches you can take to a guardian farm, and we're not going to take the easiest one. We're going to take one that is probably going to be a little bit more work than you might expect to put in for a basic guardian farm, but we also want this thing to look more spectacular. Honestly, there are a couple of different approaches to playing Minecraft when it comes to making farms and stuff like that, and I need to level with you folks. The Minecraft survival guide is not always going to tell you the most easy way of doing something. A lot of the time we're going to approach projects like this in a way that I enjoy doing because I think it's kind of fun and because it leads to a more spectacular result for the world. And there are plenty of tutorials for like really easy to make farms. Like there's especially there's a really popular guardian farm design that just involves taking them through to the nether like we've done with the slime farm and having them all die there and then transporting the drops back to the overworld. Very simple to set up and doesn't require you to take down as much of the ocean monument as we're going to do or completely drain the perimeter. In fact, previously in this series, in the Minecraft Survival Guide Season 1, I made a bubble column guardian farm, which was a decent amount of work to set up, but didn't involve draining any of the water out of the farm. We drained the monument, and then we just filled the whole thing back in, because it was going to be easier that way. For today's video, we're going to embark on a larger version of that, which is going to drain the perimeter, mainly because I want to, mainly because I think it's kind of fun to do stuff like this. And the reason I'm grabbing all of this sand and gravel is so that we can make the perimeter out of white concrete powder. I'm going to make a few stacks of this and we'll probably come back for a lot more materials. I'll throw a few of these in a shelker box for now, but I think in future it'd be really cool to have this cylinder around the Guardian farm out there in the ocean. So we are going to be making a circular perimeter around the outside of the ocean monument and in the middle of that is going to be the Guardian farm. And you might be thinking, I've recently seen a couple of Guardian farms like this, and you'd be right, but honestly, this design has been around for a little while, and I really felt like doing it this time around. I've seen a couple of folks do this, and it always provides spectacular results, so I'm pretty certain I just want to give this a try. So with that in mind, and with this map in hand, let's fly out to the southwest and see if we can track down this ocean monument. Hmm, yeah, it doesn't look like I actually did end up making a nether portal out here, which is kind of odd. There's a couple of blocks of prismine floating around here, and I definitely raided this ocean monument before, despite the fact that it wasn't revealed on the map. I think I just didn't update the map once I had found it. But I'm sure I left a nether portal near an ocean monument that we raided a second time, maybe to find some sponges? I might have to dig through my screenshots folder here and find the right one. Here we go. This is the one I was thinking of. I actually found it by flying around the nether a little bit and found a portal that was sealed off in a soul sand valley. And this, this is where I'm talking about. So if we fly out in this direction, there's an ocean monument over here, which yes, this one here, I'm pretty sure we've raided this one. And it's actually much closer to spawn and honestly kind of in a favorable location because it doesn't have all of the terrain built up around it that we would have to destroy. Where the other one was about 3000 blocks out on both axes, this one is only 2000 blocks out on the Z-axis and only about 200 blocks out 
on the x-axis. So this is kind of perfect. This is probably the closest ocean monument we've got to spawn, which makes sense for connecting it to the nether hub and everything else. And so the first thing I'm going to do is drink a potion of night vision, a potion of water breathing, and a potion of invisibility. And then I'm going to take off my armor, because armor and other equipment can alert the guardians to your presence even when you've drunk an invisibility potion. They will still be able to detect where a player is by the fact that you're still wearing armor. And so for invisibility to work at its strongest, you need to make sure that you're not wearing any armor. Now that does mean we're gonna have to fly over and take off our elytra mid-air so that we can land here, but it looks like the guardians haven't noticed me doing that, which is perfect. And if we need to swim away, I can always keep my boots on my hotbar just in case we need to swap those back in. But right now, completely invisible. Give or take the particles, which the guardians won't take much notice of. And our purpose here is really just to swim down to a relatively central location and set up the conduit so we have a permanent water breathing effect. This should be pretty easy considering we've already taken on this ocean monument in the past and so the Elder Guardian won't be present here. We just need to pop a conduit in the center of this ring of Prismarine. And once we set up one ring of Prismarine, it should activate. And from there, we should be able to... Yep, there we go. We got our conduit power effect. We should be able to set up the other rings that are going to make this a more powerful conduit. Now, we're not doing this so that we can have the advantage of the conduit being able to attack the Guardians, because it'll only do that when they get within a small enough range. Really, we just want the conduit to be fully active so it gives us the widest range of conduit power possible. And... The eye should be opening up. What's wrong with this? Oh, I think we don't have a block in this corner. That's what it is. So once we put that one in place, yes, there we go. Okay, we have a full range of conduit power. The eye is fully activated and it should start attacking any guardians that come within range, but... The main point is we have something here that's going to give us permanent water breathing. So now that's all set up, let's talk about where we're going to be farming the Guardians because the overall bounding box of an ocean monument like this reaches all the way out to the very corners of the structure where these pillars are. And so from here to the corner down there to the corner over there in a square, that is a 58 by 58 area in which guardians can spawn if the area is waterlogged and free of obstruction. And so if we wanted to, we could just box off that area, dry the entire thing out, and convert that into a guardian farm. But that's not what I'm after here. What I want to do is make a circle around the outside of this with each of these corners touching basically the walls of the circle. And to do that, we're going to need a little bit of help from an external graphics program. I'm using Photoshop, but you could use something free like GIMP or any other raster graphics program that enables you to draw individual pixels like this. So here in Photoshop, I've created a blank canvas that's only 112 by 112 pixels, so it's pretty small, and we're going to be using the rectangle tool to draw a 58 by 58 pixel square, like so. We're just going to center that in the middle there, and then we're going to draw an ellipse around that, and we're going to basically finagle it a little bit until we have something that looks about the right size. We're going to make sure that the lines here are solid so we can see that a little bit better. And then we're going to drag that around until the edges of the square basically line up with the edges of the circle like this and what we have right here is an 82 by 82 circle now obviously both the dimensions of the circle are going to be roughly the same so what you can do is center it on the middle of the image there and just rescale it slightly until you ended up with something that looked like it fit the scale but we know that this is going to be an even numbers circle because the dimensions of the 58 by 58 box that's an even number as well so basically we need to make sure that we have both of the circles dimensions the width and the height set to 82. This leaves us with a perfectly square area in the center where the guardian spawning can happen and a circle all the way around the outside which is going to be the outer boundary of the area we are draining. Now if we were using the entire area of the ocean monument to flood and create spawning spaces for guardians then this would of course be a little bit claustrophobic in here. We might want to expand the circle out a little bit so that it gave us a bit more room to walk around what might be a giant water tank in the middle. But honestly, I feel like shrinking this area down a little bit so there is less spawning space for guardians. Maybe have it be like a 40 by 40 box in the middle or something like that. Maybe we'll, we'll work on the design of the guardian farm as we go and just kind of build something that suits the area that we want. But around the outside, I think that 82 by 82 circle is going to be what we want to do. And so the next thing I'm going to do is go to a website that's really helpful for designing larger scale shapes like this, especially more complex shapes like circles, which are more difficult to freehand at larger scales. This is plots.co.uk. I'll have a link to this in the video description, of course. And we're going to use the ellipse maker here to plot what we need to draw out here. So the width and depth are something that we can control via sliders down here. You can also input these as values. And we want to have 
an 82 by 82 circle drawn out for us like so. Now this gives us a fantastic 3D representation of what this is going to look like rendered out of cubes, so Minecraft blocks effectively. If we want to take a look at this from the top down, you can click the 2D mode up here in the upper left, and that will give you the numbers that you need to count out for each section of this around one quarter of the circle. And then once you reach that center line, all you need to do is copy that same quarter over again, just rotated by 90 degrees, and you'll end up with a circle of the right size. One thing we'll need to keep in mind is that we have to draw this circle out from a center point, so there's going to be a two by two section in the center of the ocean monument from which we need to count out 40 blocks. If we're counting the central block as one, then we need to go 41 out to the very edge there, and that's going to be, of course, half of the diameter of the circle, or the radius of the circle, basically. And so back in Minecraft, we want to make sure that we are drawing the dimensions of this accurately. Of course, we know that that central section there feels like the center of the monument, but I want to count along this side just to make sure that that is the center of the monument on this axis as well as from the front, because we know that that lines up with the front of the structure, but does it line up with the sides? This whole structure is 58 by 58, so we're going to count along 29 blocks. We want 1, 2, 3, 4. Okay, so 29 is there and block 30 is there. So right at the center there, yes, that central structure is in fact a central structure. So if we start our 2x2 two two in the very center of this ring here, we can draw the radius of our circle out from this central point. And we're going to do that with all of the blocks that I brought along with me, this white concrete powder, which when we place it in water, is going to convert immediately into concrete. So from this central point, we're going to count out 40 blocks in each direction. And so that I don't have to count out loud, I'm just going to put 40 blocks in my hotbar. Once we've reached the end of that, that's going to be the outer edge of our circle. We're going to do the same thing on the opposite corner corner of this one here, making sure that we do 40 blocks outwards this way. And by this point, my uh, visibility potion is wearing off. So I'm going to grab another one of these and drink it just to make sure the guardians aren't alerted to my presence in the meantime. But if we need to do anything in the water at this point, at least the conduit is there actually killing a couple of the guardians for us and providing both water breathing and more effective underwater vision. With these arms all taken care of, we're ready to start drawing in the circle. And of course, the first block out in this direction, this one here, is going to form the first block of the arms of the circle that we need to draw out connecting each of these sides. So let's hope for my sake that I've got this right. <laughs> I'm also going to come back to this nearby swamp and grab a bunch of leaf blocks with the silk touch, oh not the fortune one, so that I can use these as filler. Because the diagram on plots shows us the outer blocks of a circle, but sometimes those are placed at a diagonal. So we'll need some kind of temporary block that we can put in there to make sure that we're placing these blocks correctly. So our first set of blocks is going to be one, two, three, four, five, six. We come in a block and do a row of five, come in one more block and then a row of three, followed by another block and a row of two. We come back out to a row of three, and then a single block there, which is followed by a couple of other blocks, because angles in Minecraft are kind of awkward to freehand. It might not make a whole lot of sense, but trust me, once this entire thing is built, it will look like a really good circle. We have a single block there, and then we have another row of two, and from here, it is single blocks in a diagonal. Okay, that is seven blocks on a diagonal like so. That's when we start moving around to two blocks again, and then one block, and then two blocks, and then one block, and then three, which is followed by a two, a three, a five, and then a six, and hopefully this should line up perfectly. One, two, three, four, five, six. Yes, we've done it. Okay, so that is a perfect quarter circle, and I've still got my elytra on so I can fly up into the air and show you there we go, we have one quarter of our circle mapped out. And now we're just going to do the same on the other three sides. So this is going to take a little bit of placing, but hopefully the guardians shouldn't bother us too much if we've still got our invisibility potion up. One thing to note though, if your invisibility potion does run out, since you're not wearing armor, you are pretty vulnerable. So I just had to escape a couple of guardians attacking me because I didn't notice my invisibility potion had just run out. I was too busy counting out the numbers on this circle. And there we go, the whole thing is perfectly lined up. And we could now remove the central arms if we wanted to reclaim all of the material, but I think it's worth taking a quick look at this from the air. A perfect circle, which is going to look kind of wonky because, of course, it's all spiraling out from a 2x2 two two in the center, so these arms are going to look off-center to you, but trust me, if you've done the maths right, it is all going to work out just fine. 
But the work is only just beginning, because the next phase of this project is going to be to fill in these walls all the way down to the sea floor below. And that's why we brought quite so much concrete powder. We are going to need a whole lot more. And it's really up to you what kind of materials you use to make sure that the area is all closed off here. But we are going to need to close it off with something because eventually we're going to drain all of the water out of this using sponges or perhaps a couple of other methods we can try to clear out all of the water source blocks in here and make this a completely dry area. That way we can control where the water is, which controls where the guardians will sport. Fortunately for us, even though it's in a deep ocean biome, this monument is relatively close to the surface, so hopefully we shouldn't need to do too much diving, and once we start clearing this area out, it should be a relatively quick process, compared to some monuments I've seen which generate much further down, and you have a harder time making sure that the whole area is dried out. But there's no time like the present, I'm going to stack a bunch of these blocks in my inventory, we're going to make sure that we've got enough room for the shulker box, and we're going to keep an invisibility potion on hand, because I see I only have a minute or so left. But once we hop into the water, conduit power should take over, making it a lot easier for us to see what we're doing. And we can start placing blocks all the way down to the seabed here, aligned with the circle that we've drawn on the ocean's surface. And during this process, it's worth noting that invisibility still functions if you're wearing one piece of equipment. You'll still have a pretty decent range in which you'll be invisible to the guardians in the surrounding area. And so you might want to put on your depth strider boots just to make sure that the process of doing this is a little bit easier so that you're a bit more maneuverable under water and it'll also help you swim away from the guardians if they detect you before you can get that next invisibility potion off. But one thing's for sure I definitely didn't bring enough concrete powder for this so I'm going to go and place a bunch of blocks we're going to make a bunch more concrete powder and when we come back we'll hopefully have a fully built perimeter all the way around this ocean monument. So this has taken about every piece of gravel that I owned to create all of the concrete powder, but all in all, this hasn't taken all that long. The whole perimeter has only taken about a couple of hours to create this way. I think the measuring part might have been one of the hardest bits of it, to be honest, but we definitely have enough concrete powder to do the job. I think this has been our fourth full shulker box of concrete powder though so you certainly need to have a lot of materials prepared for this beforehand or you want to use something a little bit more accessible like stone but that is the last block of our perimeter wall all done and dusted there are still a couple of trenches here and there like if i dive down underwater right here there are a couple of spots where yes the ocean floor has some of these caves and pitfalls and stuff like that which i haven't kind of filled in all the way to the bottom yet so there are a couple of guardians that have swum out from this perimeter and gone further down the idea is that we're probably going to just put a floor underneath the center of this thing anyway so there won't really be any room for stuff to get out in fact once we've drained the entire thing of water there won't really be any way that they could get down there anyway because all of the guardians will be contained in some sort of structure in the center but for the last little while i haven't even needed to use invisibility potions my last one has been left undrunk because most of the time when you're working this close to the monument, the guardians are going to be spawning at least 23 blocks away from you when they spawn, and as I've been building the walls sort of from the outside, I can sort of half conceal myself from the guardians and none of them will get out here to reach me. You'll notice that there aren't any spawning out in open water on this side of the perimeter either because as I mentioned, the 58 by 58 box from the top to the floor of this structure where the, where the pillars actually start generating like right here is the lowest block that any guardians could spawn on in this monument, even though they spawn in open water, but like the lowest coordinate that they could spawn in. And so despite the fact that it always feels like they're generating around quite a wide area, the guardians themselves should only generate within the bounding box of the monument. And that is a fact we are going to exploit to our advantage when it comes to actually draining this whole thing out and turning it into a guardian farm. I'm going to put away all of this concrete powder. We're going to dig out the remainder of my armor from this shulker box and we can stick that on as well so we can take a look at this thing from the air. Because to be honest, I'm super happy with the choice of materials here. I think white concrete is going to provide such a cool looking contrast and it's a base that we can provide a lot of additional detail to if we want to. If we wanted to stick a gradient on the wall, or if we wanted to do a little bit of texture detailing, that kind of stuff, we can do. And it means that this whole guardian farm is going to look pretty spectacular once it's done and decorated. It also provides a pretty convenient perimeter wall for us to duck behind in case we get targeted by any guardians. And 
I'm just going to try and dip around a little bit to make sure that they don't end up shooting me too much. Maybe it'll be slightly safer over here on the other side, but I think this is probably where we're going to leave this project for today. In the next episode, we'll discuss methods of clearing out all of the water from this area and why a couple of them are going to be more advantageous to us than others. But I think for the moment today, this is where we're going to wrap things up. Although the last thing I might do is remove the arms that we used to measure out the perimeter of the circle to begin with so that we have a nice open top to this thing and we can see down into the Guardian Temple from above. We're not going to be clearing out the conduit quite yet just in case that ends up being useful to us in the near future. I expect we'll probably need to dip into the water here more often than not so probably best if we leave the conduit in there for easy access to water breathing and a little better underwater visibility. But for now reclaiming all this white concrete is not a bad idea either and I think I might just risk putting my boots on so that I can swim a little faster even though that means the guardians are going to spot me here and there as I swim past them. One thing's for sure though, having that invisibility potion really helps you get the job done here. I don't use invisibility potions all that much because a lot of the time I'm fine just fighting stuff, but here in the water where the guardians are much more maneuverable than the player is and they respawn constantly over such a wide area so you don't really have any way to hide from them beyond dipping behind a pillar temporarily, it is nice to make sure that you can just wander around and do your own thing without them interrupting you too much. And there it is, our completed perimeter wall without all of the arms in the way so that we can see the ocean monument dead center of this thing and doesn't that look majestic all right folks that is where we're going to leave it for this episode of the minecraft survival guide a little bit invisible still here but the effect has yet to wear off thank you so much for watching this episode my name has been pixelris please don't forget to leave a like on this video if you enjoyed it subscribe if you want to see more and i'll see you folks soon take care bye for now